To today's Blue Studios lesson. So, my family had a pool party in the backyard last weekend, and I spotted my Uncle Ernest relaxing in the shade. So, of course, I had to disturb him. You see, my uncle is retired now, but he used to be a science teacher, and I just can't help but ask him questions whenever I see him. This time, I wanted to know all about what really matters. Matter, that is. What is it exactly? What are the different states of matter? Can matter change? How? Why? The cool thing, he said, he had everything he needed right there in the backyard to explain. He wasn't going to even have to get up from his lawn chair. First of all, matter is absolutely everything all around us. It also happens to be everything inside of us too. In very simple terms, matter is anything that has weight and takes up space. Dad's barbecue grill, the water in our pool, the blue sky, and my dog Sparky. They are all made of matter. That didn't make a lot of sense to me right off the bat. It seemed like there was a big difference between a swimming pool and my dog. But my uncle insisted that everything and everyone in this universe is made up of tiny particles called atoms, and atoms combine together in formations called molecules. We can't see them without a microscope. But he pointed to one drop of water that had splashed out of the pool. He said, in that one single drop, there were practically zillions of molecules. So, I summarized everything so far. Atoms made up molecules, and molecules made up matter, and matter made up all the stuff in the entire universe. Correct, he said, but there's more. Matter is typically in one of three states. A solid, a liquid, or a gas. Each one of these states has a specific set of properties, which are qualities used to define it. Properties of a solid, liquid, or gas are different from one another. The simplest properties to look at for any form of matter is its shape and the space it takes up. Solids have a definite shape and take up a definite amount of space. His lawn chair, the glass in his hand, and the lemon sliced in his iced tea were all examples of solids. They all had a definite shape and took up space. Solids are everywhere and all around us. The trees and grass in the backyard? Solids. The burgers and hot dogs on the grill? Solids. My Aunt Edna? Definitely a solid. If you looked at the molecules of a solid under a microscope, you would see they are in a tight, rigid structure. They don't move around much. Depending on the type of solid it is, you might not be able to easily move through it or change its shape. Those molecules are packed together awfully tight. Liquids, on the other hand, are a state of matter with slightly different properties. Like solids, they still take up a definite amount of space, but their shape will change according to their container. The water in our pool was a perfect example of a liquid. The water took up space and was in the shape of our pool. My Aunt Edna, a solid, could jump off the diving board into the pool and not change shape. But the water in the pool was constantly moving and shifting according to its boundaries and objects in it. Speaking of Aunt, she cannonballed into the pool and it's only because water is a liquid that she was able to do this safely. The molecules of a liquid are loosely connected in comparison to a solid that is tightly packed. This allows for solids like us to move through a liquid. A measurement often used to describe liquids is viscosity. Viscosity refers to a rate at which liquid will flow. My uncle pointed to a ketchup I was trying to squeeze onto my burger. Ketchup is a liquid with high viscosity because it's thick and sticky. On the other hand, the iced tea in his glass is a liquid with a low viscosity because it pours easily. Finally, there is the third stage of matter, gases. The properties of gases are they have no definite shape and no definite volume. They move and shift and spread out to fill whatever space they've been given. 
Gas is harder to imagine as matter because we typically can't see it or feel it like liquids and solids, but it definitely is made up of molecules. It's just that these molecules are much farther apart and moving constantly compared to liquids and solids. My uncle Ernest challenged me to name three gases that were right there in the backyard. And sure enough, I did. I first noted the surrounding air because I knew it contained oxygen gas. Then I pointed to the smoke coming off the grill, which was a mixture of gases that included carbon monoxide. And finally, I pointed to the beach ball in the pool. I knew Aunt Edna had blown that up using the carbon dioxide gas produced from her lungs. Then I just couldn't help myself and noted the propane gas being used for the grill. He always appreciated any student who went for extra credit. So was it possible to have a place with absolutely no matter, solid, liquid, or gas? Only one place, said my uncle, a perfect vacuum. And no, he didn't mean the vacuum inside the house next to the cleaning supplies. A perfect vacuum is a contained space in which absolutely all matter has been sucked out of it. It was something you were only likely to find in a science lab. It was rare. And since he had been a science teacher for so long, he felt he needed to explain a few key properties that were commonly used to describe solid, liquids, and gases. These were mass, volume, and density. In simple terms, mass was the weight of something, volume was the space it filled, and density compared the two. Any solid, liquid, or gas could be measured in terms of mass, volume, and density. So, does matter ever change state? Absolutely, and all the time. All those tiny particles within matter contain energy, and when that energy changes, a change of state can occur. How would the energy change? With a shift in temperature or pressure. There are all types of changes in states of matter. A first easy one to understand is freezing. Freezing is when a liquid becomes a solid. For example, a cherry popsicle starts out as a sugary liquid until it's put into a cold environment, loses energy, and freezes into a solid. Chocolate ice cream is a creamy chocolatey liquid until it's cooled down and frozen into a scoopable solid. Melting is another change of state. Melting is when a solid becomes a liquid. If a frozen solid cherry popsicle sits in the hot sun, it gains energy and begins to melt, becoming a liquid. When you eat a chocolate ice cream bar, the solid ice cream bar hits the warmth of your mouth and melts into a liquid. Evaporating is a change of state in which a liquid becomes a gas. A puddle of water splashed out of the pool onto hot concrete will turn into steam. That's because the water molecules will have gained so much energy, they become a gas and lift off into the atmosphere. If you jump out of a pool wet and sit in the sun, the water on your skin will evaporate into the air. Condensing is a gas turning into a liquid. For example, water molecules can live as gas in the surrounding air. This is called water vapor. When water vapor comes into contact with a cool surface, it loses energy and turns into a liquid. That's called condensation. Water droplets that form on the outside of a cold glass of iced tea is a perfect example. Water vapor in the air has hit the cold glass and turned into liquid drops of water. A steamy bathroom mirror and clouds in the sky are also clear examples of condensation. Then there's sublimation, which is a solid turning directly to a gas without passing through a liquid stage. The fog rolling off of dry ice is a good example of sublimation. Mothballs and solid air fresheners also sublimate turning from a solid to a gas. The smell of burgers cooking up on the grill is a type of sublimation. 
Some of the solid particles in the burger have heated up and gained so much energy that they become a gas in the air that we smell. Deposition is a gas turning directly to a solid without passing through a liquid stage. The frost on the inside lid of a deep freeze cooler, that's deposition. Some of the water vapor in the air inside the cooler has lost so much energy it has solidified into tiny ice crystals. The suit inside a car's exhaust pipe and frost in the wintertime are other everyday examples of deposition. They are the result of gas molecules coming in contact with a cool surface, losing energy, and depositing themselves there as small solids. So my uncle didn't let me down. He answered all of my questions about states of matter from the comfort of his lawn chair. And he used everything from my dog Sparky to the beach ball in the pool as everyday examples. He may be retired, but he's still a true teacher. Let's dive into some more fun facts about stages of matter. There are two classifications of matter, living and non-living. My dog Sparky is living matter. His dog toy is non-living matter. As humans, we have all three states of matter inside our body, solids, liquids, and gases. Water is the only matter that appears naturally as solid, liquid, and gas on planet Earth all at the same time. Solids, liquids, and gases can be looked at in terms of their intermolecular force. This is the force of attraction between their molecules. A malleable material is a solid that can be manipulated into a change of shape without breaking. Metals such as gold, silver, iron, aluminum, copper, and tin are all considered malleable materials because they can be twisted, stretched, or flattened with the use of heat. Distillation is a purification process in which a liquid is heated up to form vapor, leaving certain solid particles behind. Then, the vapor is cooled back into a liquid. Distilled water has fewer impurities than regular tap water because many of the tiny particles in the water have been removed. All changes of state, melting, freezing, condensation, evaporation, sublimation, and deposition are called physical changes in chemistry. These are changes which do not include a chemical reaction. Here are some fun activities to further explore states of matter. There's a category of matter that doesn't play by strict rules called non-Newtonian fluids. These substances act like a solid under mild pressure and like a liquid when poured. You can look up some easy recipes online for non-Newtonian fluids to make at home. The most popular one is called oobleck in honor of a strange substance featured in Dr. Seuss's book Bartholomew and the Oobleck. It can be made from just two ingredients, cornstarch and water. Of all the weird liquids in our world, by far the weirdest one is, believe it or not, water. Take a closer look at water and what a very unique substance it is. It breaks a lot of the normal rules of chemistry. Safely light a candle and observe. What changes of state do you see? How do you know? Be ready to share the information with your family over a candlelit meal. Play a speed game of spot the state of matter with a group of friends. For one minute, everyone should list all the things they can see from one spot that are solid. Then for one minute, they should list every liquid they see. And for a final minute, they should list all the gases they suspect are present. Now compare lists and reward the winner. There are actually many more states of matter than solids, liquids, and gases. Take a look online at another common one, plasma. It's highly charged, highly powerful, difficult to control, and the stuff of superheroes. What are some examples of plasma in our everyday world? What are the unique properties of this state of matter? Put together a slideshow all about plasma 
and share your findings with an audience in awe of superpowers. After my Uncle Ernest answered all of my science questions, he asked me to do him a solid, refill his iced tea. Oh, and to go show Aunt Edna what a real cannonball looks like. <laughs> well, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. We are thrilled that you're watching Blue Studios 24 7. We're so excited to bring round the clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.